Lesson 6 The Mystery of the Gospel Sabbath Afternoon, July 29 Jesus longed to unfold the deep mysteries of the truth which had been hid for ages, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs with the Jews and partakers of his promise in Christ by the Gospel. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 this truth the disciples were slow to learn, and the divine teacher gave them lesson upon lesson. In rewarding the faith of the centurion at Capernaum and preaching the gospel to the inhabitants of Sychar, he had already given evidence that he did not share the intolerance of the Jews. But the Samaritans had some knowledge of God, and the centurion had shown kindness to Israel. Now Jesus brought the disciples in contact with a heathen whom they regarded as having no reason above any of her people to expect favor from him. He would give an example of how such a one should be treated. The disciples had thought that he dispensed too freely the gifts of his grace. He would show that his love was not to be circumscribed to race or nation. The minds of the disciples opened more fully to the labor that lay before them among the Gentiles. They saw a wide field of usefulness outside of Judea. They saw souls bearing sorrows unknown to those more highly favored. Among those whom they had been taught to despise were souls longing for help from the mighty healer, hungering for the light of truth which had been so abundantly given to the Jews. The Desire of Ages Page 402. God's servants received no honor or recognition from the world. Stephen was stoned because he preached Christ and him crucified. Paul was imprisoned, beaten, stoned, and finally put to death because he was a faithful messenger of God to the Gentiles. The Apostle John was banished to the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. These examples of human steadfastness in the might of divine power are a witness to the world of the faithfulness of God's promises, of His abiding presence and sustaining grace. God's heroes of faith are heirs to an inheritance of greater value than any earthly riches, an inheritance that will satisfy the longings of the soul. By the world they may be unknown and unacknowledged, but in the record books above they are enrolled as citizens of heaven, and an exalted greatness and eternal weight of glory will be theirs. The greatest work, the noblest effort in which men can engage, is to appoint sinners to the Lamb of God. Gospel Workers, page 18. Sunday, July 30. Paul, imprisoned apostle to the Gentiles. The love of Christ, said Paul, constraineth us. It was the actuating principle of his conduct. It was his motive power. If ever his ardor and the path of duty for a moment flagged, one glance at the cross and the amazing love of Christ revealed in his unparalleled sacrifice was enough to cause him to gird up anew the loins of his mind and press forward in the path of self-denial. In his labors for his brethren, he relied much upon the exhibition of infinite love in the wonderful condescension of Christ with all its subduing, constraining power. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 457. It is not the will of God that His people should be weighed down with care. But our Lord does not deceive us. He does not say to us, Do not fear, there are no dangers in your path. He knows there are trials and dangers, and He deals with us plainly. He does not propose to take His people out of a world of sin and evil, but He points them to a never-failing refuge. His prayer for His disciples was, I pray not that Thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that Thou shouldest keep them from the evil. In the world, He says, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
John chapter 17, verse 15, and chapter 16, verse 33. In his Sermon on the Mount, Christ taught his disciples precious lessons in regard to the necessity of trusting in God. These lessons were designed to encourage the children of God through all ages, and they have come down to our time full of instruction and comfort. The Lord would have all his sons and daughters happy, peaceful, and obedient. Jesus says, My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. John chapter 14, verse 27, and chapter 15, verse 11. Steps to Christ, pages 122 and 124. God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led if they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. Not Enoch who was translated to heaven, not Elijah who ascended in a chariot of fire was greater or more honored than John the Baptist who perished alone in the dungeon. Unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. And of all the gifts that heaven can bestow upon men, fellowship with Christ in his sufferings is the most weighty trust and the highest honor. The Desire of Ages, page 224. Monday, July 31 The Long-Hidden Mystery of the Gospel Paul's heart burned with a love for sinners, and he put all his energies into the work of soul winning. There never lived a more self-denying, persevering worker. The blessings he received, he prized as so many advantages to be used in blessing others. He lost no opportunity of speaking of the Savior or of helping those in trouble. From place to place he went, preaching the gospel of Christ and establishing churches. Wherever he could find a hearing, he sought to counteract wrong and to turn the feet of men and women into the path of righteousness. The Acts of the Apostles, page 367. The Lord would not have his people exclusive, Christ's delegated messengers are to proclaim the gospel of His grace to all nations, tongues, and people. We are to make it known that the great advocate is giving audience to the whole world. The Jewish church was called to be God's representative to an apostate world, and in order to fulfill this mission, the Jewish people were to maintain their own existence as a nation distinct from all the idolatrous nations upon the earth. They were to stand in the world maintaining their peculiar and holy character, representing God's mercy, goodness, compassion, and love. Thus in excellence of character they could stand above every other nation, for through a pure and obedient people the Lord would manifest His rich blessings. Thus the principles of the laws governing His kingdom were to be exalted throughout the world, just as surely as they responded to the mercy, the light, the grace given, they would become the light of the world. They would be constantly directing attention to God as a wise, faultless, supreme ruler, and the praise of God would be in all the earth. The Lord is our God, and He has the same purpose in regard to His believing, loyal people today. Sons and Daughters of God, page 44. There is no example in the life of Christ for self-righteous bigotry. His character was genial and beneficent. In every religious denomination and in almost every church are to be found those who would have blamed him for his liberal mercies. They would have found fault with him because he ate with publicans and sinners. Those with whom God has entrusted his truth must possess the same beneficent spirit that Christ manifested. They must adopt the same broad plans of action. They should have a kind, generous spirit toward the poor and in a special sense feel that they are God's stewards. Like Christ, 
They should not shun the society of their fellow men, but should seek it with the purpose of bestowing upon others the heavenly benefits they have received from God. Gospel Workers, pages 334 and 335. Tuesday, August 1. The Church, Revealer of God's Wisdom. Paul was deeply anxious that the humiliation of Christ should be seen and realized. He was convinced that if men could be led to consider the amazing sacrifice made by the majesty of heaven, selfishness would be banished from their hearts. The apostle lingers over point after point that we may in some measure comprehend the wonderful condescension of the Savior in behalf of sinners. He directs the mind first to the position which Christ occupied in heaven in the bosom of his Father. He reveals him afterward as laying aside his glory, voluntarily subjecting himself to the humbling conditions of man's life, assuming the responsibilities of a servant, and becoming obedient unto death, and that the most ignominious and revolting, the most agonizing, the death of the cross. Can we contemplate this wonderful manifestation of the love of God without gratitude and love and a deep sense of the fact that we are not our own? Such a master should not be served from grudging, selfish motives. The Ministry of Healing, page 501. The knowledge of God as revealed in Christ is the knowledge that all who are saved must have. It is the knowledge that works transformation of character. This knowledge received will recreate the soul in the image of God. It will impart to the whole being a spiritual power that is divine. For this cause, Paul says, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 19 Testimonies for the Church, volume 8, page 289 let each one who claims to follow Christ esteem himself less and others more. Press together, press together. In union there is strength and victory. In discord and division there is weakness and defeat. These words have been spoken to me from heaven. As God's ambassador, I speak them to you. Let everyone seek to answer the prayer of Christ, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. O oh, what unity is this! And says Christ, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 488. Wednesday, August 2. Christ dwelling in your heart. Paul's was a life of intense and varied activities. From city to city, from country to country, he journeyed, telling the story of the cross, winning converts to the gospel, and establishing churches. But in all the busy activity of his life, he never lost sight of the one great purpose, to press toward the mark of his high calling. Paul carried with him the atmosphere of heaven. All who associated with him felt the influence of his union with Christ. The fact that his own life exemplified the truth he proclaimed gave convincing power to his preaching. Here lies the power of the truth. The unstudied, unconscious influence of a holy life is the most convincing sermon that can be given in favor of Christianity. Argument even when unanswerable, may provoke only opposition. But a godly example has a power that it is impossible wholly to resist. Gospel Workers, pages 58 and 59.
It is Christ dwelling in the soul that gives us spiritual power and makes us channels of light. The more light we have, the more we can impart to others around us. The more closely we live to Jesus, the clearer views shall we have of His loveliness. As we behold Him in His purity, we discern more clearly our own faults of character. We yearn after Him and for that fullness that is in Him and that shines out in the perfection of His heavenly character. And by beholding, we become changed into His image. Our hearts may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let us take the key of faith and unlock the storehouse of God's rich blessings. There is an infinite fullness to draw from, and we have the promise of our divine Lord. According to your faith, be it unto you. Lift Him Up, page 266. You may summon every power and capability that God has given you in the endeavor to comprehend the love and compassion of the Heavenly Father, and yet there is an infinity beyond. Eternity itself can never fully reveal it. Yet as we study the Bible and meditate upon the life of Christ and the plan of redemption, these great themes will open to our understanding more and more. And it will be ours to realize the blessing which Paul desired for the Ephesian church when he prayed, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 740. Thursday, August 3. Glory in the Church and in Christ We have been called to the knowledge of Christ, and that is to the knowledge of glory and virtue. It is a knowledge of the perfection of the divine character manifested to us in Jesus Christ that opens up to us communion with God. Scarcely can the human mind comprehend what is the breadth and depth and height of the spiritual attainments that can be reached by becoming partakers of the divine nature. We are living in days of peril. Christ alone can help us and give us the victory. Christ must be all in all to us. He must dwell in the heart. His life must circulate through us as the blood circulates through the veins. His spirit must be vitalizing power that will cause us to influence others to become Christ-like and holy. Our High Calling, page 60. There are many who think that it is impossible to escape from the power of sin, but the promise is that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. We aim too low. The mark is much higher. Our minds need expansion that we may comprehend the significance of the provision of God. We are to reflect the highest attributes of the character of God. We should be thankful that we are not to be left to ourselves. It is the privilege of the children of God to be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. That I may know him, page 302. In everything we should show forth the joy of the Lord. David declares, I love the Lord, because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2. God's goodness in hearing and answering prayer places us under heavy obligation to express our thanksgiving for the favors bestowed upon us. We should praise God much more than we do. The blessings received in answer to prayer should be promptly acknowledged. Let the peace of God reign in your soul. Then you will have strength to bear all suffering 
and you will rejoice that you have grace to endure. Praise the Lord, talk of His goodness, tell of His power, sweeten the atmosphere that surrounds your soul. Praise with heart and soul and voice Him who is the health of your countenance, your Savior and your God. God's Amazing Grace, page 325. For further reading, In Heavenly Places, Our Glorious Work, page 248, and My Life Today, God is My Father, page 289.